30. CPS Geometry. The Square Root Spiral. As we have seen in the previous video, the diagonal, and the size of a square, are incommensurables with each other. This geometrical statement is equivalent to the following arithmetical statement. The number 1, and the number square root of 2, are two incommensurable magnitudes. This fact can also be stated in the following way. There is no way to express the number square root of 2, as a ratio, between two integer numbers. The next logical question one might ask is. Are 1 and the square root of 2 the only set of incommensurable magnitudes? Plato told us that Theodorus, has discovered a full set of incommensurable magnitudes. We will follow his approach, and visualize these magnitudes, using the square root spiral. At each step in the development, the spiral is extended with a segment equal with 1, perpendicular on the radius, in that point. As a result of this construction, the new radius increases, and is equal with the next square root number. What Theodorus has discovered, is that the square roots of numbers, that are not perfect squares, are incommensurable between themselves. The square root, of a perfect square number, is always an integer. The integer numbers, are also incommensurable, with the square root of numbers, mentioned above. For example the following quantities are incommensurable. The square root of 2 and the square root of 3. Or. The square root of 2 and the square root of 6. Or. The square root of 3 and the square root of 6. Also, we can include here. The square root of 47 and the integer number 13. Or. The square root of 11 and the square root of 35. So, the number of incommensurable magnitudes is infinite. The existence of incommensurable magnitudes is not some kind of very rare exception. In fact this is the rule. We also shall note that quantities like. The square root of 2 and the square root of 8. Or. The square root of 5 and the square root of 80 or the square root of 12 and the square root of 243 are commensurable quantities. Let's look next into two other well-known spirals in mathematics, namely the logarithmic spiral, and the Archimedean spiral. More precisely, let us look to the methods of constructing these two spirals, based on their definitions. 1. For the logarithmic spiral the angles between the tangent to the spiral and the radius of the spiral, in any point, are equal. Let's consider this specific logarithmic spiral, with the angles between the tangents and the radius, equal with 90 degrees. When the angles between all the radiuses are equal, one can show that intersection points, between any radius and the spiral, are distributed in geometrical progression. In the ancient Greece and the Roman Empire, the rich people used to cover the floors of their houses with mosaic designs and images. These designs are known as rosettes. To understand better the logarithmic spirals, we will look next into the logarithmic rosettes. These rosettes were usually done using similar tiles, arranged in specific patterns, which form concentric circles. As an example, Let's design a logarithmic rosette by starting from a circle, approximated by two concentric polygons, with 12 sides, and respectively 24 sides. Point A, is one of the 12 intersection points, of these two polygons. The location of point B, is selected at this stage of the design, and its location will dictate the rate of growth of the logarithmic spiral. Now, if we connect all 12 points, similar with point B, we get another 12-side polygon, which approximates a new circle, concentric to the initial circle. We continue the process started above, in a similar way, for this new circle. We need to find the location of point C, such that the angle between BC, and the radius through B, 
is equal with the angle between AB and the radius through A. This is the necessary requirement, defining the logarithmic spiral. The angles between the tangent to the spiral and the radius of the spiral, in any point, are equal. The equality of the angles, mentioned above, makes the triangle, OAB, and the triangle, OBC, similar triangles. For these two triangles, the corresponding sides are in proportion. The point, O, is the center of the circles. Let us continue our construction, and add a new circle, following a similar approach. First, we need to find the location of point, D. Again, the angle between, CD, and the radius, OC, is equal with the angle between, BC, and the radius, OB, and also, is equal with the angle between, AB, and the radius, OA. There are now three similar triangles. OAB, OBC, and OCD. If, K is the ratio between the radiuses, OB, and OA, then from the similarity mentioned above we have for equal increments of angles, arithmetical progression, the radiuses form a geometrical progression. OA K multiply by OA K square multiply by OA K cube multiply by OA and so on. The logarithmic rosette is constructed from tiles, shaped as similar triangles. The following triangles are similar triangles. ALB, BMC, and CND. By changing the location of the point B, one changes the angle between BA and the radius OA. Looking closer into our example, we can see that we can find a location for B, such that this angle is 90 degrees. And, as the number of sides of the initial polygon increases, Point P, tends towards the circle. How does then, one can have a curve that is identical with its tangent in any point, and for this curve not to be a circle? The very definition of the circle states that the circle is defined by the infinity of tangents. Another way, of constructing a logarithmic spiral, is to use the golden rectangles. Here again, in each stage of the development, the spiral is approximated with circles. 2. The other well-known spiral, we need to mention now, is the Archimedean spiral, also known as the arithmetic spiral. This spiral is the curve described by a point, moving away from a fixed point with a constant velocity, along a line which rotates with a constant angular velocity. The logarithmic spiral, is distinguishable from the Archimedean spiral, by the fact that the distances between the turnings of a logarithmic spiral increase in geometrical progression, while in an Archimedean spiral these distances increase in arithmetical progression. The logarithmic spiral, the Archimedean spiral, and the square root spiral are concepts and products of the classical plane geometry and the Cartesian plane. Let us mention few similarities among these three spirals. A. For very large numbers, the square root spiral approximates the Archimedean spiral. When this happens, the distance between two windings of the corresponding Archimedean spiral is equal with the number pi. B. For the square root spiral the angles between the spiral and the radius of the spiral is 90 degrees. For a logarithmic spiral this angle is usual some constant, but can also be 90 degrees. Now, if we consider the unit length, involved in the square root spiral, as being infinitesimal, then the two spirals are similar. As we have seen in a previous video, the golden section corresponds to the specific case, when the arithmetical mean is equal with the geometrical mean. One can then imagine a logarithmic spiral, for which the geometrical progression, 
is also an arithmetical progression. This is already the case for the Fibonacci series. In the next videos, we will use the facts presented in this video, to introduce a metric relationship to characterize the distances between points in the CPS geometry. Few surprises are waiting for us, just around the corner. <laughs>